Hello, DFS family. Uh, welcome back to the newly branded Sunday School NFL DFS podcast powered by Fantasy Six Pack. I am your host, Dave Eddy, and you can find me on Twitter at Corporal Eddy. And as always here, I am blessed with the presence of my very handsome sidekick, uh, Mr. Patrick Mikowski, who you can find on Twitter at PattyMac33. Now, before we get started, um, if you could go ahead and do us a quick little favor and just hit that like button down there. And then after the podcast, if you enjoyed yourself, uh, do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to keep a leg up on all your buddies, uh, go ahead and swing on over to fantasy6pack.net to check out some more great content. So uh, welcome to week 16, Patrick. Yeah, how are we doing? We got two weeks to go in the regular season, David. I know. Isn't it kind of crazy, man? I literally feel like uh, the Lions were just starting to break my heart a couple days ago and <laughs> And it was it was about three months ago. <laughs> yeah, well, they broke our hearts a little bit more when we found out that Quinn and Patricia were coming back, and Ford was still going to be the owner. So, I, you know, I, I I'm okay with it, man. No, no, another 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 uh, another topic for another day, though. Um, yes, sir. Let's look ahead here. Um, main slate. So we're missing out on three games on Saturday, but I think we got a eleven game slate on Sunday. Uh, what are you doing for core plays this week, Pat? Yeah, this week I really like uh, Amari Cooper, uh, 6700 bucks uh, this week. Last week, only two targets from him. Uh, throughout this season, in games after that he's only had five targets or less, uh, he's averaged over 20 fantasy points in those games. Uh, week seven this, this year versus Philly, he had five catches, 106 yards. Eagles ranked 30th against wide receivers, uh, 27 fantasy points a game, 175 yards, touchdown and a half, giving up almost 15 yards a catch. Uh, Philly's given up over 45 fantasy points seven times this season, opposing wideouts, uh, and they're sneaky good against running backs, the seventh best fantasy points per game. Uh, so I don't see a whole lot of Zeke in this one. I see a lot going through the air. I like Amari Cooper this week. You're familiar with Katy Perry, correct? I know who she is. So Amari Cooper to me is like Katy Perry, the Katy Perry song, Hot and Cold. He <laughs> he either gets like 20 plus points or he gets nothing. Um, last time out against Philly, he had five catches for 106 yards. Um, he had exactly five targets, so that's pretty efficient. It's it's going to be a playoff atmosphere. Um, I mean, there's a lot on the line, uh, specifically for for Philadelphia, I guess, because of the tiebreaker. But um, it always scares me in divisional matchups. Uh, but I mean, it's hard to argue. I mean, Cooper could be a guy that has a huge week, and even though that Philadelphia pass defense has been, you know, getting better as the year has gone on, um, they they still don't rank so high. So. Um, I, I could I could see playing Cooper. Sixty seven hundred dollar price tag doesn't excite me, but it's certainly not a bad option. Um, main guy that I'm rolling with this week is going to be my man Joe Mixon. Uh, dude has been just back to absolute workhorse status for the Bengals since uh, about week eight. So he's logged fifteen or more carries in every single game during that span, uh, and he's had back to back games now with twenty carries and hundred yards and at least twenty one fantasy points scored. So uh, Mr. Mixon has, has really been uh, turned it into an old self after a really terrible start to the season. And then going against the Dolphins, I, I expect the very chalky Mixon this week to absolutely smash in that spot. And then, of course, I have to talk about Philip Lindsay, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, we wouldn't have a week without it. Right. So, Philip Lindsay um, has been on my radar for weeks, basically since he took over the backfield in Denver. So, Obviously, he's facing the Lions' just atrocious um, defense this week. And so clearly, I'm running him out there, right? Yeah. Wrong. Absolutely not. Um, as much as this matchup just absolutely just makes total sense, uh, I'm going to jump into my fades because I think Lindsey's the guy that's going to be fairly well owned. And I'm just not going to touch him, um, this, you know, especially after what he did uh, last week. Even though he's had basically these opportunities. Um, and he's got a terrible defense, and he's at home. I, I just can't, I just can't pay for him again, man. He, he scored more than ten points one time, uh, and that was in week fourteen, um, a whole thirteen and a half points against Houston. So I, I don't know, 
I don't know why he is doing what he's doing because up until last week, he had a minimum of 13 carries. He's just not very efficient, and he has not been getting in the end zone. Uh, he scored one rushing touchdown and does not have a receiving touchdown, and he's got a high water mark of 67 yards in that time frame. So, um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to surprise you there and say that's a big old fade for me on Philip Lindsay. Uh, the other fade for me is going to be A.J. Brown. So dude's coming in at seven grand, uh, which is a lot higher than he's been recently. So he's been a great value play the past few weeks. Uh, he was $5,300 against Oakland, 6000 against Houston. And those are you know two pretty bad defenses against the pass. This week, he's all the way up to seven grand now. So um, up 1700 and up 1000 from last week. And he's going to get shadowed by none other than uh, Marshawn Lattimore. So that's going to be a hard pass for me on A.J. Brown this week. Uh, what are your fades looking like, Pat? Yeah, I'm going to fade, you know, although this is a super juicy matchup this week for Russell Wilson, uh, 7000 bucks against Arizona pass defense. Uh, as Lee Corso would say, not so fast. He's the second highest priced tag for a QB this week. He's only scored 20 or more fantasy points one time in his last eight games. The last matchup against Arizona back in week four, 240 yards passing, one touchdown for a measly 14.3 points. On the season, Russ Wilson has averaged about 31 pass attempts a game. Sneaky little stat with Arizona that they have only given up 20 or more fantasy points one time to opposing QBs that have thrown less than 31 pass attempts in a game. I'm fading Russell Wilson in a super juicy mass matchup against the, the Cardinals. Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, I think quarterback this week is really interesting. Uh, I mean, you know, Russell at seven grand uh, with, with what he's been doing lately, I, I feel is a, you know, it's a high price, but against the matchup like you said at home you know he's definitely in a great spot but uh, not that they were using Josh Gordon a whole lot but you know he's off the field now um, he won't be playing yeah he's playing with a different type of grass still yeah he's playing on a different type of grass you got that right bud um, <laughs> and then you know they're without Penny um, who was more of a pass catcher so he's, he's got some limited options compared to what he had been working with and, yeah, he hasn't been so hot lately. He has scored, uh, I mean, under 20 points now ever since the last time he had over 20 was week nine against Tampa. And I don't know. It's it's tough because, you know, Lamar's up at eight grand, and then he dropped down to Wilson in a great matchup at seven grand. And then, ah, man, it, it's tough. So I can definitely see taking both sides of the fence on Wilson. So, I don't think fading him is, you know, is, is a terrible call. Uh, what about a, a pivot for you this week, Pat? Who are you looking at there? Yeah, I'm seeing uh, Austin Eckler, uh, 6,100 bones uh, in that Chargers backfield. Oakland giving up 13 most fantasy points a game to opposing running backs, right at the 18 and a half a game mark. And I'm just still seeing no love for Austin. Uh, to me, Melvin Gordon is still the household name in L.A. Uh, for some reason, that's the name everybody wants on the back of their jersey. But since he's been back, uh, week five he came back, Melvin scored less than 10 fantasy points four times. Eckler has only one time. Melvin Gordon averaging 14 fantasy points a game. Austin Eckler averaging 18 and a half fantasy points a game. So although people thought that Gordon is going to come in and he's going to be that number one back, Eckler is still showing out. Um, Shotgun Willie likes Austin Eckler this week. Are you concerned, though, about his 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 ceiling, his upside? I mean, you've got, you know, obviously, like you said, you talked about Gordon sharing the backfield. Gordon gets the majority of the carries. Uh, so Eckler's doing his damage in the passing game. you got Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Hunter Henry. Uh, and Eckler all fighting for targets on that offense. Yeah, it hasn't been an issue so far. I don't see it being an issue going forward. Uh, I think that Austin Eckler is Philip Rivers' blanket. He's a security blanket. Uh, when he knows he needs to move the ball, that's the guy he's dropping it down to. Uh, he, he's going to get his touches. 
Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you there. And I mean, if you look back at week 14 against Jacksonville, I mean, all it really takes is for him to break a big run. Uh, which he's more than capable of doing. He had 100 yards receiving and 100 yards rushing uh, that week. So, you know, he's got the potential. It's just it is a little scary. Um, And I pretty much have shied away from Eckler and Gordon since Gordon's been back. But, um, I mean, Eckler definitely has the the possibility, you know, to to put up a big game. And and my pivot is kind of in in a similar situation, really. A little bit cheaper, though. Um, We're talking Kareem Hunt. So $5,500 there. Um, I think you can pivot to Hunt if you're looking to save some money from a top-tier running back or if you're looking in other guys that are kind of in the same price range that have good matchups, such as you know the Chargers backs. You just talked about Eckler and Gordon. Um, pivot from Lindsey, pivot from Freeman, pivot from Mack. Uh, all guys that have pretty good matchups this week but are just in that same neighborhood as Hunt. Uh, I mean, Hunt, he's been just insanely consistent this year, so... Um, kind of a little bit different than um, you know, uh, you know other guys that, that we talked about at the top there, um, like Cooper and even a little bit like Eckler, but Eckler's been a little more consistent than them. Um, so he's put up between basically 12 and 17 and a half points in his six games. No higher, no lower. So cash wise, at least um, you pretty much know what you're getting from Hunt, but he definitely has the ability to you know have an explosive play or two and, and just go crazy. Um, Cleveland is very likely to be playing from behind in this game. And even though, you know, Chubb is absolutely an elite back and has had much better than, you know, expected success against, you know, good run defenses like Baltimore, you really are looking to play Hunt for the PPR points. And, you know, like I said, that explosive, you know, play potential that he does have. So a common theme for me this week is, you know, saving money. Um, And even though Hunt isn't necessarily dirt cheap, um, he's definitely a guy you could pivot to running back um, from a higher price guy, especially um, you know if you're looking to pay up elsewhere. Uh, always the always one of the toughest ones of the week, Pat. Um, contrarian play of the week. W- what are you looking at there? Yeah, I, I'm digging on the redheaded stepchild this weekend. Andy Dalton, 5,200 bones for him uh, versus the Miami Dolphins. Uh, just like your love affair with Philip Lindsay. I got a love affair with any quarterback that's matching up against the Finns. Uh, they're giving up 270 yards a game, two and a half touchdowns a game, 102 QB rating. I mean, David, I wouldn't be shocked if you could go out there and put up those kind of numbers against this defense. Left-handed, Pat. Left-handed. Left-handed. There you go. So, you know, Miami's only given up uh, or has given up more than two touchdowns in all but two games this year. So you can pretty much count on somebody finding the end zone twice against these guys. Uh, he's got uh, some pretty solid and finally some pretty healthy weapons at his disposal and in his arsenal with, as you mentioned, Mixon, Tyler Boyd, uh, Eifert, John Ross. I'm digging on the red tomato this week. One, one thing that I like about the Dalton play, um, obviously outside of the good matchup, is once we get down to your Hail Mary I think that, you know, it would allow you to make a nice little stack. Um, I, I don't know that he will be just crazy low-owned because of the matchup, but I think the combination of the two guys that you have down there could be a sneaky little GPP play to, to slide in there that most likely won't pay off, but it, it certainly could, man. Um, my contrarian play is kind of like a half Hail Mary, um, half contrarian, but... Um, I mean, as I mentioned above, um, I'm off the Lindsay train, but for some reason, I'm a fucking closet Broncos fan. So, um, <laughs> so I, I'm talking about Tim Patrick here, uh, who's at thirty six hundred dollars. Um, so even though I, like I said, I'm off the Lindsay train, I, I've got to do something to get some action against these Lions. Um, I'm likely going to be paying down at quarterback, um, which we'll get to uh, here shortly. And probably paying down at a lot of other positions because I do plan on owning a lot of CMC, a lot of Michael Thomas, um, a lot of Joe Mixon this week. A lot of it all in the same lineup. So for for the Broncos, I think Sutton is probably the most obvious play. Um, you know, especially in a passing matchup against you know bad, 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 bad Lions defense. But I mean, Darius Slay still a very quality corner. I, I don't think that he's going to shut out Sutton by any means. But, you know, I, I will probably need to save some money this week. And so I'm looking at a better value than Sutton. I think that Noah Fant would be the next most obvious option. 
Uh, but he's, you know, dealing with an injury as well. Um, Broncos don't really have a whole lot to play for. So unless he really is healthy, um, you know, I, I definitely think that better, you know, values will exist on that offense. Uh, next, we would look at probably a lot of people look at the Sean Hamilton. Um, he's actually seen 16 targets uh, compared to uh, Patrick's 12 since Drew Locke has been under center. But I definitely think that Patrick is is a much more explosive player, uh, much more the kind of guy that the Lions defense is going to give, uh, or it's going to give the Lions defense some fit. So I've been on Patrick before. Uh, I need to save money this week. So I am trusting Patrick a lot more than Hamilton. Uh, so I think he is so far under the radar this week that he has got a definite, um, a definite upside to him um, and will make a great contrarian play for this week. So to coincide with your, you know, Andy Dalton uh, contrarian pick, what's your, what's your Hail Mary looking like, Pat? Yeah, my Hail Mary this week, I'm, I'm going to throw it to John Ross Jr.'s kid. Uh, John Ross, the third, 4,200 bucks. This guy's finally healthy. Uh, he's the clear cut number two receiver in Cincinnati. He's got a great chemistry with Andy Dalton. The first two games this season, him and Dalton hooked up 20 targets, 11 catches, 270 yards with three TDs. The last two weeks with Ross being back and Dalton under center, Three catches in each one of those weeks, six targets apiece. I think that John Ross could put up a pretty solid number this week uh, catching the ball from the old tomato. I mean, one thing I love about John Ross is, I mean, you talk about explosive plays. I mean, he, he is, you know, a snap away every time they're on the field from, you know, breaking a 70-yard touchdown run or, well, you know, catch and run. But um, and again, against that Miami defense, you know, if you know you can catch Dalton throwing the ball to Ross, which is extremely plausible, uh, I, I think that you know you're onto something there. My hail mary is, um, you know, if you didn't see the nose ahead of time, you you probably would. I'd have to ask you to sit down for a second before I before I got <laughs> into it. Um, but I mean, Will Greer at forty three hundred dollars. Who? Uh, yeah, who? Um, absolutely just incredibly great value for a starting quarterback um, in week 16. So uh, as much as Kyle Allen was terrible, I, I'm hoping that Will Greer is not quite so terrible because I'm going to talk about some of the pieces that, that Greer's got around him. So uh, he's got CMC, obviously, uh, who probably is going to get more more touches this week than usual even, um, which is why I'm big on him. But, uh, I mean, he's, he's also going to be a guy that – Greer really has to, you know, dump the ball off to pretty much at will, no pun intended. Um, obviously, he's got an elite wide receiver right now uh, and DJ Moore that he can chuck that pigskin to. And then Greg Olson is back this week. So between CMC uh, and Olson, you know, he's got some short to intermediate passes, um, you know, to, to quality players. And then when he wants to chuck that around, he's got DJ Moore and, you know, Curtis Samuel as well, who I, I think is somewhat underrated. I'm obviously not the guy that normally plays risky at quarterback. Um, but, man, at this price, I don't think that getting 4X on Greer is is even asking, you know, a whole lot. Um, you know, shit, 200 yards and a touchdown is going to pretty much get you 3X right there. Um, so anything on top of that is gravy. So 250 yards passing, hell, two touchdowns. Um, you know, he runs for 20 yards. I mean, it, it's not really going to take a whole lot for – for Greer to not only get you great value, um, but also allow you to get either CMC or Michael Thomas, or I'm going to do a lot of, you know, like I said, CMC and Michael Thomas, but I can do that because I can play Will Greer. So, you know, if, if you've got, you know, the, the balls to sit there and, you know, pump some money into Will Greer as your quarterback, um, you know, you can be creative enough that you can really use that save money to sit there and, and build a lineup around him that's going to be just, you know, the, the, the upside's going to be there. It's just a matter of, you know, how much do you trust Will Greer? You know, his price is kind of one of those things where it's almost too good to pass up, so so we'll see. 
So that about does it on, on my end of things, Pat, for week 16. Uh, is there anything else that you want to throw in there? Uh, just, you know, I wanted to take a second and wish everybody a very Merry Christmas since we're not going to be able to, to talk again before then. Uh, enjoy your time with your friends, with your families. Um, and we will uh, we'll be enjoying ourselves some pretty good football over this next weekend. So. Oh, man, let's hope so, huh? So, again, um, if you could do us a quick favor, uh, hit that like button. And we hope you enjoyed the podcast enough that you're going to go ahead and hit the subscribe as well. And then, like we said, swing on over to fantasysixpack.net for a bunch more great content. So, Patrick, I'm going to go ahead and play us some music on the way out. All right. Cheers, buddy. Happy holidays. You too, sir.